Hello everyone, I'm Natalie McCool. Um, I'm here today with Anil Sebastian. Hello. I'm <laughs> Paul Frith. Hello. You can sound a bit more enthusiastic than that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so I'll just do a quick intro. Um, myself, Paul and Anil met in a well during a, a songwriting camp in LA and it was kind of like a UK mission uh, to take uh, UK songwriters over to America to work with US writers um, as kind of like a trade mission uh, on both sides. So we met during this camp and it was like, it was a, what is it, four day camp? It felt longer, but I think it, it was, was four. four. Yeah, four <laughs> I think it was only four. <laughs> yeah, a four day camp uh, in Hollywood, writing in various studios with some really cool people. And that's how we met and we're here today in this it's super awesome. Um, so I just want to intro um, Anil. So can you tell us a bit more about yourself, please? Um, I am Anil and I sing and I write songs and I run a choir, founded and run a choir called London Contemporary Voices, uh, which is based in uh, London. <laughs> awesome. And who have you worked with? You work with some big names, please. Tell yeah, us. with the choir, um, you 2 Imogen Heap. Um, Sam Smith, Laura Envilla, um, lots of people. Awesome. Paul, in fact. Yeah. The CNI. Yeah, well. yeah, the yeah. CNI. Cool. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Hello. <laughs> Can you please tell us a bit about yourself? Well. <laughs> <laughs> guy, guy for advice. No. Uh, Don't hold back. I, my name's Paul. I am a composer, um, songwriter, um, producer. I do music. <laughs> do you have like a main <laughs> instrument? Is it brass? My main instrument is brass, okay, yes. Cool. Yeah. So you do a lot of uh, brass arrangements and string yeah, arrangements? Yeah, brass arrangements, stuff. string arrangements, that kind of thing, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I'd just like to touch on um, our experience in LA because obviously it's how we met and it was a really intense experience. Uh, basically, we were stuck for four days, basically in a studio for like 13 hours per day, uh, writing. A song per day sometimes two songs in your case a neil um <laughs> which well done by the way <laughs> um Swat. Swat. God. making everyone else look bad no um and then we would record the songs and we had a playback at the end and the songs were for live pitches for uh tv and films mainly in america was it yeah. mainly in the u.s yeah, yeah. so I my experience was <clears throat> like awesome i've kind of spoken a lot about it on social media but i just want to get a kind of sense of your experience so how did you find it neil um really intense but brilliant um i have a bit of a kind of um with my own music i take a long 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 time over it and i really layer things up some of my tracks have got you know 180 200 individual little bits and <laughs> things going on that are kind of built up and take days and days and days to mix so to do something so intense where you're sort of working really quickly and like trying to make things a bit more immediate and to brief was like a completely different way of working for me and kind of returning to doing something that's much more pop um you know mm. was really really like unexpected yeah um because I wasn't sure I thought I you know maybe I'll be writing um orchestral stuff yeah in, at this thing but no idea what to expect so yeah that was really like unexpected um but good yeah we didn't really know what we got until we got there yeah like they didn't send the yeah. briefs out at all beforehand no. so we turned up in the morning and it was like okay we've got this 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 and this and you're with him today and you're and then just go so yeah. it was kind of like ah uh, so yeah i didn't know either like it, no. would it be uh, pop would it be i don't know about you guys but it's like i think one of the things i found really interesting about it was like working yourself out and what what kind you know de dealing with your own like mood and like what how you feel about the briefs and what you th what what's going on creatively for you but then everyone else who you've only just met and like figuring out like yeah. what people's skills are and what they what they want to do and trying to sort of work that out so quickly enough to kind of get really hit the ground running with an idea and that that was like a real like it, but it worked, and it's, I was surprised that it worked because mm. that's what I was most worried about, actually. Yeah, but it turned out fine. 
Yeah. You mentioned the other day um, that you have to get used to the other per- other people's way of working as well. And you kind of figure that out once you get in the room. Yeah. That's quite interesting, like different dynamics. Like I felt there was a lot of different dynamics going on. Like each session was obviously with someone different and then you kind of worked it a different way. Yeah. Which is quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of feel like it, it it's like um, uh, I could sort of do with doing that but like maybe like once a month or something mm. for four days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like kind of like intense, like total immersion. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. kind of. I'll go thin. with two. Two days. Two, yeah. days. <laughs> two days and a steak in between. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a really good idea. It gets your brain just like, you, you, you just like, ah. Um, and it just makes you go, 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 really. Did you guys uh, sleep? Did you, did you sleep? Well, I, I got there after one hour's sleep because I'd been at <laughs> yeah. a wedding the day oh, before in Texas. So I, I wasn't in the greatest <laughs> state for the first <laughs> session. <laughs> Your song was really good from the first <laughs> session as well. Can you Maybe remember that's it? The, it that's really the secret. Good. That's yeah. the secret. I think, I, I do, I, genuinely, I do think that was a really good thing. Yeah. I probably have a tendency to be very defensive. And I think, like, when you're dealing with no sleep, like, all kind of emotion is just laid bare. And, you, yeah. you know, you kind of, yeah. I think that's why sometimes, like, the most creative things happen yeah. right at the end when you're kind of under the most pressure. So just to turn up in actually quite a stressful situation is yeah with no sleep is maybe not a bad thing but i don't know whether i'd advise it yeah <laughs> dear listeners if you're going it's on a songwriter camp stop yourself <laughs> asleep yeah. i slept okay uh, but you had a tough time didn't you i didn't sleep? i basically just didn't sleep for the four, four days because when i got home i started thinking of more ideas and writing lyrics and things so i was just yeah. up all night just like whispering little mad things into my phone. (laughs) Whisper into the mirror. Just like... (laughs) Squirrel. It's squirrel. (laughs) Oh, Um, I don't know though. You you were both like really on it, like even from lack of sleep and whatever else is going on. Like, I don't think... When when you're immersed in that situation, you just like go for it, don't you? There's no like... I think you do. Um, You have to really... Yeah, um, sometimes I don't know because I think sometimes if I'm if I'm very tired, I have to almost keep myself awake. So, you know, be like pacing around the room and like playing things to stay awake. You know, so it kind of mm. I think it kind of gets you in a different headspace. Yeah, of yeah. and coffee and coffee. <coughs> oh god, yeah, and then you get that kind of jittery. Yeah, it's <laughs> probably why you didn't sleep. <laughs> it's probably yeah, you're you're drinking. Le- no, yeah. I wonder what it was. I just remember on our session, I just had made you so much coffee at the end. Oh God, yeah. When we were in the in El Dorado at the end, yeah. you were just like, "Can I have a coffee? Can I have a coffee?" Can I have a coffee? <laughs> and you just literally like, "Come on, can I have a coffee? Black uh, coffee as well. Yeah, you must have been off your tits." Well, the problem was because I because I was I was staying. <laughs> <laughs> the guy I'm staying with every time I got in would just like continue chatting to me and we got on really really well but I'd, I wouldn't get to bed until like 3 o'clock in the morning <laughs> yeah. and have to be up again at kind of 8 like, yeah. uh, it makes me think like is which leads on to my first question actually um, how sustainable is songwriting like if you're doing that day in day out 13 hours a day I know like it's probably not for 13 hours a day but you know, pe- people do genuinely do that day in, day out. And I wonder, like, how... Uh, the word's not effective. Like, how good that is for you. Yeah. I don't think this living is particularly healthy. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not, is it? Uh, for the body and the mind. <laughs> for the body. I don't know. For the mind, I think, maybe. It's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's fun, but it is not... Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's by no means unstressful. Mm. Mm. And I think it's like, because a lot of, I mean, if, when you're like producing like a song or a, an album or something, there's a lot of tasks that you can switch to that help that if you're not feeling particularly creative or inspired, you can like do the boring job of, I don't know, like EQing something <laughs> or, you know, yeah. you can do something that's less. But yeah. But when you're doing the songwriting thing, it's just like the demand to come up with something original and and amazing all mm. the time not even just like you, you the pressure you put on yourself is to write something yeah. amazing like yeah 
And if you're not writing something amazing and you're in a session and you kind of know that you're not, then that's just like really annoying, really annoying yeah. feeling of like plowing on with like yeah. an average song. And you're just like, why am I doing this? I guess though that, that <laughs> you know, professional songwriters, like top songwriters must write, they just write so many songs and you know, not all of them are yeah. amazing, but it's like the the level of productivity and the like routines that they go through like i think routine is really important yeah. like in any self-employed job especially music because sometimes you're working from home or, and you've got other distractions and you're just like yeah and it's really important having that like routine okay 10 10 a.m till three i'm going to start on this idea yeah and then blah 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 like I, you know i think i kind of always dismissed that way of thinking like completely and i'm really bad at it i'm very undisciplined and a bit of a mess really. <laughs> but like i think it it kind of it's i've started to realize that you can actually work in a more structured way and you can yeah. actually do that and you do actually then get things done yeah yeah and i don't don't think it ever really fully occurred to me until like last sort of few years that you can actually like decide to start at a particular time yeah, yeah. Um, and finish at a particular time yeah i, I do all the time like and yeah. it's, it's easier for me to work from, from later till later if you're if you're working in creative industries you make your own hours but as long as you work like a productive day it doesn't matter when you start and when you finish mm. i don't know is it the same for you like do you like to start early or uh April? no i don't know i tend to start later when i can um oh why did we do 10 a.m to, well i didn't do that i came in 11 sorry yeah. <laughs> i'm so sorry for being late oh, just trying to, like, try, 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 yeah, trying, trying to get out the um trying to get the most out of a uh, a day but yeah if it's just me i tend to again i can kind of work all through the night yeah and definitely uh, yeah um i'm definitely more a night owl yeah um i like working at night i find i find that at night one of the best things about it is that no one else is awake which mm. i love like so that you, you kind of have this sense of like freedom from the like hum of everyone else's like life you yeah. know so you don't you know your emails aren't going off and mm. your social media is not so going off and it's just peace so that's like. something i do so on my on my computer i completely i think between because i couldn't turn it fully off there's no way on your computer to completely turn it off and if there is i'd love to know but <laughs> I'd be quite right. so there's between eleven fifty nine and 12 o'clock is the one time where my laptop can kind of give me any messages to tell me stuff's going on and then I quite often just turn my phone off, and I'm down in a basement, so That's I have no in your no soundproof yeah. Yeah. basement yeah, sound with no reception. With no reception, <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. But yeah, I, but I really, I really enjoy that. And, and you know, I, yeah. I a couple of years ago, um, when I was doing the biggest thing I'd done, which was this writing the symphony, I would take on a Friday, every Friday, I would book it out, and I wouldn't allow any sessions, and I had an out of mm. office and everything, so. Yeah. No, no one would contact me on that day, and it's mm. just like it's a block booking, and it really, and that was interesting because you, uh, there, there were kind of days where you'd go in, and you'd be like, I cannot write, I cannot figure out what I'm doing, mm. and so you just, you just start pumping out whatever, like yeah. whatever kind of shit and crap, and just like here it is, and and then you kind of sift through it because I, I think effectively all all creativity is is its choices so you suddenly become in control of the choices so you go okay I'm going to put down random stuff and then I'm going to start choosing which bits of that I like and, and mm. putting it together and then suddenly that starts formulating an idea and you can start working on that and then you realise that I don't just need to wait around until I'm inspired I can actually I mm. can start seeding stuff and yeah yeah see what comes out of it yeah and actually i think one of my favorite things i've ever written has come out of that experience okay. of actually really hard grafting it mm. yeah yeah but no yeah. that makes a lot of sense I, I read an article not that long ago that was um that was actually based on an experiment where one group of people they were learning pottery and it was about creativity and like how you develop quick most quickly, so qu most quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying, oh. Quickest, quickest. <laughs> um, I'll and, edit um, that out. <laughs> um, one group had to just make um, as much as they could, as many pieces of, as they could in a day. Yeah. And the other group had to kind of make the masterpiece. They had to like read all the information of as to how to create the thing, and then go and make it and try and get it perfect. And obviously, the group that just made loads and loads of stuff 
they they're the ones that got better mm. quicker because they they learned through you know the, the failures of what they were doing yeah. but they also had the peer mentoring of everyone else around them to look at and kind of talk about the experience of making it and their generally their anxiety about making stuff yeah. just went really to zero yeah. because it just doesn't then become a problem anymore uh, yeah I, I agree like I, I always think <clears throat> um when you think about songwriting it's like there's some magical fairy thing like yeah it's like you can't predict and it, like you can't predict whether it, you're gonna ha- write a good song or or just mm. come up with something mediocre like it just depends on you know what comes out on on the day but you know there are like certain practices and if you if you do it a lot then of course you're going to be better at being productive and coming up with ideas and mm. you know some of the idea some of those ideas might be good um but you know if you're if you practice it's like being a uh, master at something you have to put in like how many hours is it like i don't know like twenty thousand hours to be like a master oh, the of ten, a, the ten thousand hours ten thousand yeah. hours to be a master of an instrument or you know a master of you know i don't know any any practiced thing so yeah. i guess songwriting is part of that as well yeah that makes sense it's kind of half magic half <laughs> half yeah. practiced graft i guess yeah but, <clears> but <throat> i think that's the thing because it's, it's say for me i think it's all all you're doing is you are in, increasing the quickness with you, with which you can make a choice. Mm. So, because mm. th- that's all it is. You're right. You're writing songs like here's a melody, here's a harmony. What which uh, do I prefer this melody or this melody? Do I want to go up here or, or down? And, and I think at a certain point you get fast enough that you stop even being aware that you're making those decisions, but you are constantly making mm. them. And so it's just it's just about always being in control of that choice with which you can make a choice. Mm. So. Mm. Because th- that's all it is. You're right. You're writing songs like here's a melody, here's a harmony. What which uh, do I prefer this melody or this melody? Do I want to go up here or, or down? And, and I think at a certain point you get fast enough that you stop even being aware that you're making those decisions, but you are constantly making mm. them. And so it's just it's just about always being in control of that choice. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's mental. Like you c- you can do that with something creative. Of co- like you ob- obviously can. Um, I think a lot of people suffer from that kind of choice paralysis thing of like. I, I don't know which you get really bogged down in choices because you think that if you do it the wrong way then you're going to yeah. be because what you're doing is then doomed mm. in some way so so even things like choosing a priest you know preset sound to get going with on an organ you might just be sitting there for hours just going oh, i don't know maybe this one maybe this one yeah but actually you don't you know it can just to know limiting things early yeah. on can just really help that's it, you know? oh, i think that's huge for me uh, i remember i had this kind of i had this moment where i felt like the computer was controlling me because of so many kind yeah. of things yeah. and so i just i set myself a whole bunch of rules like you you can only use this particular kind of sound or you can only use mm. this Makes sense. And, and then you, you you try and work out the best way in order to get you you again you have in your head I want this sound. So using these things I've restricted myself to, how do how do you get that sound or how do I get as close to that? But rather than it me flicking through a computer going, Oh, oh that sounds nice, I know what I want before I mm. start. Yeah, before you start looking at it. And where to it, find yeah. that as well and that's yeah. to do with the like the practice thing, like you just know where to go for that. Yeah. You've yeah. Done it before. yeah. Um one thing I wanted to say was uh you can do that with production but also with a. Uh, like for example uh pj harvey wrote an album entirely on piano because she wanted to just narrow she's yeah. normally a guitarist she wanted to just like narrow what she was doing into mm. like one instrument that she does she's not really you know um 100 uh familiar with and that's a really interesting way of um looking at writing as well um yeah. i think yeah um, just like some something that's new to you um, and that you have because I think because I'm not really very good on piano at all and I, what I find is I just sort of sit there and find shapes that I like and it, when it becomes more visual like that it's like oh that that feels like a nice shape and it looks nice and it also sounds nice mm. and then kind of moving shapes around until I find something that that's good without without having the automatic thing that I'd have if I played the picked up the guitar which is like yeah I, I already know what the possibilities are for the next thing and i mm. know them in my head which kind of yeah. which can be really useful but can yeah. also just be like really annoying yeah um 
yeah, you get happy accidents, don't you? That yeah, way. Oh, definitely. And I think mm. I think anything that breaks your normal patterns is mm. a really healthy thing. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, otherwise you just you spiral down into just mediocrity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and you know, I think like the LA thing that was, I think part of what was amazing about that was you you're suddenly forced to and I'm, I'm not really used to collaborating so you're kind of suddenly working with a whole bunch of other people mm. Mm. who've got their own ideas and their own ways of doing things and that's that's brilliant because it's just like okay this is all fresh input into. yeah um, and I think as long as you never kind of take the attitude of something is right or something is wrong yeah um, and I think that's the most freeing thing I ever kind of figured out it was like oh, okay right all of these things are, are, yeah. are right yeah. then you can suddenly just work with anything yeah. take mistakes make yeah, but, own them <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah. if, if you think about it like what y- people's perception of right is is just within a particular genre or style or sound so when you start to break that you come up with effectively new genres and like cross genres and new things and that surely that is the desired outcome of making music like mm. you know something that's not uh expected yeah do you have any uh practices for writing songs that you like to go for say if you know if you're in a session or if you're just by yourself uh mm. is there is there one thing that you start to do when you're to to, to kick off the creative process either of you um, yeah there's a few things actually um and that's the thing i think it's keeping it moving isn't it so i think i would never say i do it one way only it would be more like kind of sometimes different things work on different days or different Mm. moods but one of my favorite things to do with particularly when i'm working with um either with myself (laughs) or with another singer is just to start with a drone Mm. um just you know a really simple drone and not put any chords in whatsoever and just try and keep it that way for as long as possible so that the 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 melody um and the lyrics that are coming out are the absolute focus and i think maybe that comes from having listened to a lot of indian classical music um and being quite inspired by the strength of that melodically and rhythmically because i think yeah it's just that thing of like it, and uh, and also it's probably just because i'm rubbish at piano <laughs> and, <laughs> and not that great on any instrument so if i find that if i can just whack down a hold down a chord and uh, just see what see how much i can do with just you know a drone i've got a bunch of toothbrush uh, toothbrush songs and it's just <laughs> like toothbrush yeah, songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. what is this toothbrush but, song because i've got an electric toothbrush and you're there mm. and it just like oh, it yeah. hums and i just start humming <laughs> along with it and just start <laughs> go, oh, I, lo- I love that okay that's a great that's question good. that's really good yeah what is the weirdest uh, <laughs> inspiration that you've had uh, can i start with mine mine was actually <laughs> my mum was downstairs on the internet which is hilarious in itself to watch. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she was watching a uh, like a what did this like a trailer for uh, Liverpool Sound City, which is a festival we have in Liverpool, and some of the band's uh, feedback, and I heard it from upstairs, and and it was like almost like a chord progression, but in this guitar feedback, like completely not. Um, not played as a chord progression it just happened that way and i could hear and i was like ah that's cool so i started like writing something and then that that track was the first track on my last album so it's it's so odd the way that happens yeah Yeah. what about you guys i mean toothpaste yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) i think i I think one of the cool yeah one of the coolest things that ever happened was um i have a few analog synths and um, I was checking out. I had this. I had this weird old AT sequencer, which um, wasn't a computer. You kind of plugged it in, and it um, it did stuff. And one day, I um, I'd been kind of working out the sequence on it, and accidentally just unplugged it, and it completely fucked with all the sounds on my uh, analog synth, and it just sounded so cool. And I just ended up making this kind of crazy piece of music from <laughs> this kind of weird what happens when you unplug the sequence and it's kind of sucking the voltage out of like, <laughs> like that, yeah. so yeah things that would be really hard to like plan or like recreate and it's just a surprising thing that happens in the moment isn't it it's like mm. yeah things like that all the best things i've ever done are mistakes yes yeah. yeah. doesn't really say much about me <laughs> <is it? laughs> right. 
All the best musical things I've done. Mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I want to kind of move. Hold on, I want to know an else. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you have yours. I'm sorry, Neil. Go on. That's all right. No, I don't know. I'm trying to think of. I, I'm trying to think of so like many. Bennett's, I yeah. bet it's weird. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, you've had, you've got your toothbrush. Because I've got quite a few microwave ones. Yeah, ah. I've got some microwave microwave sounds. But um, I think um, actually, I've just thought of something completely different. It's totally unrelated. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, was, there was one song that had the sound of a flushing toilet in it. Great. Um, but it reminded me that I worked with this amazing, really musical uh, guy in in a previous job of mine. Um, who was autistic and he had a f- extreme phobia of the sound of flushing toilets. Okay. Um, and he used to have to listen to Bob Marley um, on his he- specifically Bob Marley on on his headphones in order to like Aww. when he went into the toilet to why Bob so Marley? I don't know. I just sort of kept him calm during yeah. that, and it he used to get so anxious. He used to have to actually do a hit and run on the <laughs> like flush <laughs> and run. run. That's got nothing to do with the. The question. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great, it's a great little story. Who's your favourite artist, Anil? You know, if it's a particular <laughs> lyric know. or even a backing vocal, like one of my favourite songs is uh, Lionel Richie All Night Long, and you, you know why? <laughs> it's that backing vocal all that night. goes all night, and then it moves up all night, <laughs> and that is my favourite part in any song. So anything like that. Um, that that's the sound of my brain just <laughs> freaking out at this question. All right, because 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 the thing is, so one thing I'll say about this before before I, I I give any proper answer is that I almost think that I've started to understand it from the inside more, having worked with so many people. That when we say artist, we mean like a kind of world of people. Yeah, yeah. And like so, when I say like my favorite artist is X or I, I, these, are, this is my top ten. I don't mean necessarily that individual. I mean the whole world of people mm. around as well. Mm. And so, you know, I I would have in my top ten, um, like, uh, um, Björk and uh, Portishead. Yeah. Um, and I'd have. Uh, Jeff Buckley mm-hmm. in there. Been, um, been discussing discussing him today. Oh yeah, Have we've been, been yeah we've been, been, been trying to trying Jeff. to play Grace. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. singing it. it uh, yeah. yeah. I haven't been I haven't played it for That's a long time. Brilliant song. Jeff Buckley is one of my fave yes. artists. Yeah, it's interesting you said like the world of people because that like I'm on this workshop at the minute and there's some French people on it mm-hmm. and they they have a similar saying in English. They, and they say your uh, your musical universe, and I yeah. think that's a great way yeah. of putting it, like yeah. that universe. Yeah, and you could have a few different universes. Yeah, but exactly, it's, it's like a collection of exactly. And I think it's part of being an amazing artist is is create creating that universe. And some people are just ex- exceptionally good mm. at that, you know, mm. and and pulling together people that you just would not expect to be you know like pulling together people from completely different worlds mm. um and this sort of a beautiful collision of things and uh, you know on on that album on grace you know having a, a benjamin Britten piece in mm. the middle of it yeah, yeah. i mean that's mm. it's completely unexpected and 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 actually really a really strange thing to do if you think mm. about it but but brilliant and it, and it's things like that like kind of worlds colliding that i i really love yeah um it's it his voice lends itself really well to mm. it so yeah. i suppose like it just suits his universe that song suits his universe yeah i guess so okay i i'll name some artists as yep. well um uh oh my goodness i can't remember tom waits mm. okay. tom waits and i i remember first getting into him i, I met uh, a couple at a um new year's eve party and I started talking about clarinet, and they're like, "Oh, have you ever heard Tom Tom Waits?" Because I was saying I really wanted to do some kind of clarinet in the new stuff I was writing. And I was like, "Oh, I, I mean, I know the name, but I didn't know him." And they they're like, "Just after midnight had struck, we went round to their house, and they just basically put on all these albums <laughs> Tom Waits." And mm. I was just like, "This is amazing!" But there was um, the one which I really loved was on Black Rider, and there's this just this kind of opening interlude which is just it's just musical and it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and it's like 
you've kind of got those moments and then you've got his crazy voice kind of yeah. and just that's, sometimes it's such it's so disparate from this kind of really fragile music underneath and I just yeah I don't know I, I, yeah. I love that I love that contrast and mm. yeah do you have a favourite Tom Waits song? no no I, d- I find because I that's yeah. again that's difficult with him isn't it because it's not it's not he's not that kind of artist it's not like it's like the, each album is like a a world in itself isn't it it's like, yeah it's hard to kind of think of them as individual songs i find yeah. like i don't think of it like that yeah. And, yeah and then i think it was like i was saying earlier like the cure cure have been like mm. one of my favorite bands since i was like a kid i've just yeah. always always loved them yeah and um loads of bands that have dropped off of my list you know there's kind of you you love them when you when you first hear them and then you kind of you, you grow out of them yeah. and all this kind of stuff yeah. and then that band for, for whatever reason have just been consistent consistently there life. the whole time yeah yeah but i think that's the thing that's difficult about the question isn't it because you do have those songs as well that mm. i get addicted to mm. and i just i can't stop listening to them and all i want to listen to is that song and then i it's almost like i kind of use it and it kind of I can't <laughs> it permeates your brain. Permeates and, my yeah. brain, and then I don't need it anymore, and then I'm done mm. with it, and I can't bear to listen to it. But I'm there's, well, there's that scientific on. thing about figuring out a song. Like it takes you about, it takes you five listens to figure out a song, and mm. you want to hear it again because you haven't figured it out yet. Right. Ooh, yeah. Oh, there, there's a that. whole book on that. I think it's um, Nick Hornby. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Because I think some there's there's a couple of songs like so i think jolene by dolly parton mm. um is really interesting because it's got this like the the rhythm of it is quite actually quite odd if you if you write it down um and then also um hey yeah, ya yeah. by outcast mm. it's yeah. got that bar of two yeah in it you know the claps are, and 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 it always sort of fascinates me that song because i've like covered it before and if you sing it everybody knows it everyone gets really excited about it you know, wherever you play it, everyone's like, oh my God, it's this song. Like and and then when it gets to that bit, they don't know what to do because they can't figure it out. Yeah. It doesn't, it, but they know it, but it doesn't make sense. And it's, it's really yeah. like... I think that's important for a successful song is having something in it that is unusual. But yeah, but uh, unusual, but memorable. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, and the, the thing with that song as well that I really like about it is I don't, immediately understand the emotion of it because it's so many things all at once because mm. it it's almost like encapsulates so many different feelings yeah is you could dance to it but you could also feel quite sad and yeah, yeah. Also, it's like it's it's really quite um works on a lot of different levels yeah I had a weird thing a weird with um, uh, needle in the hay mm. um who's that it's elliot smith isn't it and it's like yeah. uh um i remember listening to that and there was something really bothering me and I went to sleep and I woke up at like three in the morning and it's just like, you know, when you get those kind of like weird epiphany moments and mm. it's just like, oh, he's he'd done a weird thing with his capo where it wasn't all the way over. Oh, okay, yeah. And it's just like, and just suddenly, and I kind of like, and I just picked up a guitar and I kind of put the can and it's like, oh, that's what's that's been, what bo- that's what's that's been bothering me. Yeah. That's what's been really bothering me. And yeah. it's just like, and um yeah, it was just it was just kind of that weird thing where your brain's obviously still working. Kind yeah, of doing trying to figure things. it out. There's um there's a new capo that I saw. It went round on social media that that does just that. It kind of only does. Ah, uh, yeah, they're I kind do... of like banjo uh, capos. You can, so you can I do. Get them on there. You yeah, probably see. I've got a bunch over there, but yeah. some some of mine I notch out holes and all over the place. So you <laughs> just so that, so literally, that, yeah. So you just literally, yeah, you have, yeah, you can have a drone string like in the middle, yeah. but it's of a different, yeah, different nice. key. But then yeah, you can just still play. That. Yeah, that's good. Mm. I shouldn't give away my secrets. Oh, Don't yeah. put this out. Thanks for that, Paul. Using that on my next album. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've got all different sizes for exactly that to oh. kind of do it. But yeah, that's, cool. that's good. I'm yeah. also like while we're talking about stealing things, I, I am. Um, that, that body so we were natalie and i were doing a, a song the other day and she's got this like body percussion part in it and mm. there's something just so instinctive about that part that i was just yeah like, the chest gonna uh, chest clap clap mm, click. Mm, yeah but it's brilliant and i was just like right it's with the like, reverb as well like to... you can imagine it in a big room mm. that reverb i've done body percussion stuff before but it always feels a bit clunky and awkward but something about that the way that it connects it's, it's very yeah. easy to sing and do it at the same time so i might borrow oh you can t- you feel free <laughs> go for it 
<laughs> well, we, uh, but you have to credit me on every song. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a thing like that with the C&I where, uh, um, but it was nicked from The Wolf of Wall Street. So, you know, that's that kind of thing. You know, like, have you seen The Wolf of Wall Street? I haven't oh, seen so, it just because yeah, yeah, it's so yeah, long yeah, yeah. and okay. I don't want to get into yeah. it. But there's this kind of bit where there's this kind of character and he's just going... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's about that just And uh, so we, we had this piece. It was like... And just in one rehearsal, we started joking. It's like, oh, let's just do this because we just kind of want to go down to a harm. And it's like, let's just start doing this. And so, like, the whole band does. <laughs> does this, like, yeah. There's something about that uh, <laughs> that was quite nice, actually. Yeah. <laughs> should <laughs> Which be, I liked should be clear what about did. what we're all doing here. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're uh, thumping our chest like, like monkeys, pretty much. Um, <laughs> And yeah, it makes your voice go wobbly, but, but yeah, yeah, like a, Madonna and the Brits, way. where she had that cape. Put yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever sung? Have you ever sung through fans? I love that. I love that flange. <laughs> yeah, oh, so I always say flange. Flange it like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> makes it sound like a fly. It's a good, it's a good thing. That's another technique uh, that I all these all secrets, flushing toilets and fans and yeah. toothbrushes, toothbrushes, <laughs> singing with toothbrushes. Wow. Mm. Um, I wanted to touch on something that I think about quite a lot, actually, mainly because my friend Georgina um, had <laughs> her friend works in programming mm. and she designed this software that generates lyrics. Okay. And for her friend's birthday present, she had me uh, put me up melody and music to lyrics she generated. And the lyrics were absolute nonsense. However, strangely charming. Yeah. And I just wondered, you know... Yeah. The, the kind of science of songwriting is it possible to boil songs down to a set formula or you know for, for me a song is more is more than just that it's like an emotional kind of yeah. um attraction there as well um, but i just wondered what what are your thoughts on that well um paul was saying earlier that about choices and about you know um writing a song is is effectively like a series of choices and in that sense I think uh, a computer could, um, can already Mm. write songs and make those kinds of choices very quickly. But the thing that um, I think it will also eventually be able to do but can't necessarily do at the moment is is create things that have like a political relevance or a relevance Mm. to people's emotions and tap into... um, the kind of complexity of culture that goes with music and and how it moves and how it affects people but that said i think it could learn that and fake it really well mm. probably just by having lots of songs chucked and that's how yeah, they, they're yeah. created is yeah. having lots of songs chucked into them yeah. but um yeah i mean i mean in the same way that i think a computer could probably create a piece of art by yeah by if you chuck in a picture of i don't know a picasso and a picture of photo of a giraffe and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> your face and yeah. whatever else you want to put in there and yeah. give it tell it these colors and then it will probably come out with something really messed up and strange and interesting but i don't know if that really i don't know the future of that because i think I think it has a real, uh, like, place, or place, is that the right word? But, like, a possibility in, like, very basic forms of songwriting at the moment. Like, I can imagine it being used to make bedding music in things. um, Yeah. Where it is really kind of algorithmic and you are just kind of writing to formula. But I don't know if people are going to want to go and see AI artists, artificial intelligent artists and... I don't know why people would want to use it to create songs. Yeah. Cause what would be the point, really? Yeah, it's like where where's the universe of that then? Yeah, you know. <laughs> and, and and what would be the advantage? I mean, why would you, you know? I suppose I don't know. But I, d- I, I don't know. My my fear with it, which is, and I think this is true of a lot of kind of machine learning, where kind of you get these things kind of go through all these algorithms and what they feed on is they feed you know you get feedback from like do people do people like this and Mm. you know here's a bunch of songs and you know what are the various parameters and so you can definitely kind of come up with a whole bunch of stuff that people like but surely it's again it's just a descent into to mediocrity or or you know the just commonness Mm -hmm. whereas i think 
I think what's far harder is to uh, have someone who's like a complete iconoclast and kind of comes out of nowhere and then suddenly that is amazing. Now, the algorithm can then take that into account and then that can be formative, yeah. but then there'll be something else which comes mm. out. And I think I think that truly new, truly creative thing, I think is um, maybe computers can do it, it's fine, but I don't think it takes away from, yeah, I don't know. People doing it, People yeah, doing it. and I think that new, cr- that that kind of newness and originality, it might well be that like computers can do that in the future, but at the moment I don't think they can. I think it's more like they can, like you say, like reassemble and uh, and and I think one of the things that about the mediocrity thing that you're saying is like it, it's almost like an echo chamber because if yeah. you if you take in like if you if you stick in to this algorithm like Beatles and mm. Rolling Stones and I don't know big massive famous songs it will come out with like some like frankenstein version of them and it will be really good probably like Mm. in a lot of ways and the lyrics will be all like strange quite charming quite odd (laughs) but it won't necessarily be um it it won't be original or interesting or new it'll be interesting because it's like it's got it might have an odd character to it that you'd only get from like a strange machine you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pretending to be human steve kind of. jobs has had a word with uh, <laughs> someone in some department come yeah. with the frankenstein machine <laughs> but it's a wider thing because i think the whole journey with artificial intelligence and in music and creativity like there's a lot of talk at the moment about about the kind of work that will remain if if a lot of work gets automated but it kind of brings you back around to this idea of well what are we doing and why you know and yeah like, what's the i think another thing with that is like <clears throat> if everything's about okay we're, we're, we're making something that everyone likes yeah i don't want to make something that everyone likes mm. no not actually i my, think, not my I think the only <laughs> p- yeah. important thing is that you like it yeah exactly <laughs> yeah yeah no, absolutely yeah if you like it, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Like, for, you know, the artists I listen to and the songs that I like are very personal thing, like mm. about something really personal and there's a story behind why they wrote it. And I love, I love like hearing about all that. And, you know, I don't think computer generated music intent- will ever yeah. have that. Yeah, the intention, that's the like you intention, say, like the intention yeah. is missing and like the story yeah. around it and the, the culture of it and how it connects with everything else. Mm, and interesting ha- when you said about politics as well, because that, mm. that's one of my questions, you know, how important mm, how important today do you think kind of political, like putting kind of a, not political agenda, but uh, writing some, about something important to you uh, that that is political? I think music's become quite apolitical. Yeah. Like in probably the last decade, I'd say, um, in a lot of ways, because it's become quite difficult for artists to feel free enough and to have the permission from. I don't know, because because there's so much commercial sponsorship and so much. Um, there's so many relationships built in that kind of way <coughs> yeah. that you can't easily just say whatever you like yeah um because there there are sort of risks associated with it in terms of how it would affect you commercially yeah. which sounds really like paranoid or com- you know convoluted but i think it, there's some truth in it that you know it, it, there's a lot of good things about that kind of commercial sponsorship but if you are an artist that's effectively being endorsed by a big brand then you kind of I don't know. Mm. They're going to support things that that go with their politics. Yeah. <laughs> no, for, for me, I think it's more. Uh, I don't ever write anything particularly political or even political at all, actually. But it's about storytelling. So, yeah. and I think, I think that's far far more helpful because I think the, the minute you go down, okay, well, I'm going to talk about. Brexit or whatever it happens mm. to be, you've already there's already division. Kind of the, the pe- people already have they've made their allegiances. Whereas if I can tell a story or I can kind of come across yeah. like you, you can express an idea through um, yeah. through stories. And, and quite uh, what I used to do years ago when um, uh, in my uh, a lot of the songs I wrote, they would they would be stories that people knew already. Mm. But you would take 
take some person in that from that story and you'd kind of show the story from their point of view to, right, to give it a, a totally a right. totally different twist you just do it in you know kind of and, and i love that and i love i love kind of changing mm. people's well, opinions or ways they ways they think of things yeah. through that but it's not particularly political it, it's, it's not um like preaching it's yeah. not yes. preaching but yeah. it's just ideas and it's just yeah. yeah it's just kind of you know yeah i think i think there's um i think it's kind of coming back round though in in that i think i've noticed that that there's a greater degree of lyrical depth going on in in some newer artists mm. because of that um i think in a way there's been something something strangely positive about people not earning as much money as they used to from music because i think in a way it can co- kind of free people up a little bit more creatively creatively to kind of create things that are a bit more genuine and a bit more um yeah telling more of a story and 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 things that kind of have a narrative arc across more than one song even you know like a a body of work that's kind of i suppose when you've not got like a label behind you you're a bit more free in what you can say you know yeah imagine if you're just writing a song in your room and then record it and you can just say what you want yeah (laughs) yeah yeah exactly that's the freeing thing about it i don't really write political i don't really write political songs but like to me it's important like talking about my mental health and yeah stuff like that which i think is is political anyway yeah i don't know i think writing about what's important to you in your life is the political for you yeah so no i think that makes sense and i think like things like writing your songs about your experiences and about stories that you want to tell and then the the dialogue around the songs and you as an artist is again a different thing and that can provide context for the songs that you're writing but also have a kind of way of connecting with other people and and there is something political about that and you know getting getting your message across and and making and i think also being part of a movement that that encourages things that you value you know like Mm. talking about mental health like women in music like Mm. you know um gender equality and things like that you know um do you, so, not think, yeah. do you not think those things naturally um, appear in your music anyway? I Probably, think, I, I yeah. Think unless in the, unless you, you're really cynical and you go, okay, I'm going to go and write a piece of music because I want to. I want it to yeah. be on Radio 1 or whatever mm. it happens to be. Then normally when I kind of sit and I, I, I write, the things, that I, the things that are on my mind it tends to be what I... Yeah, it comes out of my lyrics... Yeah. Yeah. another interesting thing about LA that I always think of is that everyone was so concerned at the beginning and trying to write to the pitches and really like <laughs> as, uh, well uh, certainly I, I was I'm not sure about you guys but I was like really worried like okay we've got to, it's got to be good and I've got to do this and I've got to write to the pitch and uh, you know and then by like the fourth the third fourth day when we got all that yeah. out of the way and out of your system yeah. and you settled down a little bit and started to chill out, like, I just enjoyed it. I, yeah. I, I enjoyed... Well, I did enjoy myself, but, you know, I felt a bit more... Yeah. Yeah, day three and four, I definitely was like... Just I'm let go. Right. Just yeah. let go a little bit. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just let go and ha- actually wrote stuff for you that you would listen to yeah. like in your own time anyway try to and if george would let us have the piano <laughs> <laughs> if george would let you have the piano um, one of the most <laughs> so it still amazes me that guy <laughs> do you know about this no, no. You do because you were there. It was like George. In the, in the, George. George was the guy on the door, like the receptionist, who was like at that studio. Oh, oh George. George! Oh my God! Yeah, George. He wouldn't let. Is us that in his the name? Re- I can't George. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, his name is emblazoned was, in my brain. Was he? Was he doing it for your own good? Was he? No. Was he restricting no. your the choices most, to help the, you? The most unhelpful studio engineer <laughs> ever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we, the the, we the can't, engineer we, was lovely we when it came in. Do that. I'm afraid <laughs> we can't do that. Just do it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I just everything. It was just you mean you want to use the piano? It, yeah, yeah, it, like yeah it was literally. Why? 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 Why, 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 why do you want to use it? Why don't you use this this horrible thing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Oh Why don't God. you just use your thumbs? <laughs> Why you just, you're a musician. <laughs> you can use no. anything. No, no, no. <laughs> Remember, all you need is a toothbrush for. for. For a bit of background information, Paul and I did a session at one of the studios, and uh, the receptionist was unhelpful to say the least. Yeah. Um, you know, he might be a cool guy outside of the studio, but. He shouldn't probably not. probably shouldn't have been working in a, in a kind of customer service role. Let's put it that way. But we 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 overcame it yeah. and we wrote a good song and yeah. it was all good. But that's the story behind that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks for bringing that up. Right. I, I blocked his name out. I blocked him out of my brain. Uh, well, see, I've so been focused on that. He's, he's been there, uh, you know. He's about a song yeah, about, I've been writing about, songs. I've been writing yeah. so many songs about George. George. Whole album. Kill George. Piano <laughs> <laughs> like George. Piano album. Piano album about George. One, one of them, which, which would be like George. the silence of the recording of the room, <laughs> th- but I with re- no piano being played. Yeah, I, I, I remember. <laughs> the, sound of the, the waiting piano. Yeah, waiting just re- resonant. <laughs> I remember asking, that guitar didn't work that I was using. Yeah. And I remember I said it to him, and he just went. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> oh god ah, it was fun it was so that's much really, fun that's regardless hilarious. yeah that's i think hilarious. i think that was the bagel i think um, one of the, one of the most helpful conversations <laughs> i had about like the writing thing about lyrics was about like because i got really stressed out about that like kind of but things being very conceptual because most of the stuff I've been writing was all about like you know physics and AI and time and all the like, you know and you've been writing all this stuff about mathematicians Math, yeah. right and I was chatting to Didier who was there with me and he was just like well when you're talking to people you're having normal conversations with them it's not like you're bogged down with how to talk to people normally because you've got like you've been thinking about consciousness it's not like you can't talk to the taxi driver or yeah like that we can't have a conversation here because of that so lyric writing is not any different really you can still just write lyrics in a way that communicates with people in an everyday way yeah it's like really just as powerful and important you don't have to be like you yeah know, poetic all the time poetic all and the time and like making super conscious of it yeah 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 yeah, I guess like well, they always say you know when you're struggling to express truly how you feel in a song or like get 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 a chorus line that works. It's like whatever it is, just say it in the plainest terms exactly what the song is about or what you want, what you mean, and generally that that works for me. Okay, yeah, just a little so, tip. I, no, I quite, I quite <laughs> often, I always like having a very clear idea of what the song means but then i like taking away from it mm. so that there's very it's, it's still very clear in my mind and it's very obvious if you ever told anyone what it's about but then you allow people to imprint on their their own yeah that's sense. important so, as well yeah. and i think space in there yeah mm. and it's just like yeah I don't, I don't and occasionally songs can be completely prescriptive you know they can be great but i just yeah i think there's something that's just yeah allowing Allowing, Allow, yeah. allowing someone else to have space yeah, in there to, to, to love it for whatever yeah. reason for whatever's going on in their life at that point yeah. Yeah. definitely I think that's really important actually that's something that I've learned over time to do more of because normally I'm quite on the nose and very kind of explicit about my own experiences but it's nice to just kind of make it a bit more abstract so people can yeah. have their own interpretation of it it's quite interesting mm. um, cool Hmm. Is there anything you would like to add? Now that we kind of no. through my no. notes. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 That's it. That's that. That's that. I'm done. I dreamt <laughs> I dreamt the other day that this podcast would be over at <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just have a couple of stupid questions that I asked uh, every podcast. I hope that's okay. Um, it's not. It's not actually a question. It's a stupid game. Okay. Right. So the game is called Mints or Mints. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> mints or Mints. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go around. I'll go first. So I'm going to say the word Mints. And you have to tell me whether you think I mean the meat or the sweet. <laughs> okay. 
You ready? Yeah. Okay. Mints. The sweet. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'll do one for you, Paul. Mints. The meat. No, that was the sweet again. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. It was. It was. Do you want to? Do you want to try? <laughs> Mints. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Mints. That's the meat. Yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I, what you're saying is that I can, you know, enun- I can enunciate incredible <laughs> diction. <Incredible. laughs> Go on, Emil. All right. Um. Mm. <laughs> Mints. Meat. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mints. Sweet. Yes. Oh, that was a great. That was a great <laughs> round. Good. Well done. Very good. You got that. So many people don't. They're like, what? Um, but you, you got you got that really well. Thank you so much, guys. Thank um, you. Do you want to plug yourselves on social media or anything that you've got coming out? Please um, say. Uh, on Instagram, I'm going to try and get better at it. Paul Frith <laughs> yeah. Music. Me too. Me too. Paul Frith Music. Yeah. And Anil dot Sebastian on there. Um, and other places. <laughs> and is that a website as well, anil.sebastian? anil.sebastian.co.uk. Okay. Oh, yeah. Great stuff. Or dot com. Dot com. Um, yeah, dot com. Okay. It probably <laughs> redirects. It probably yeah. redirects. You You'll know. find me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much, guys. Paul Frith, Anil Sebastian, and myself, Natalie McCool. Woohoo! Woo! <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and follow to this podcast. I'm Natalie McCool and you can find me and my music on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and also on my website, nataliemccool.co.uk. Thanks!